I'm Ethan Jewell, and you're watching The Music Enthusiast. Hi, what's up? I'm Sarah from The Music Enthusiast, and today I'm here with Ethan and Jewel. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Same here. I'm so excited to be talking to you. I'm glad to be here. How's your day been so far? It's been good. I've just uh, taken it easy. I woke up too late. And then right as I was hopping onto this interview, uh, my I realized my laptop battery was dead. So that was stressful. Okay. But, <laughs> but we got it up. We got it running. We're good now. Uh, it's been storming all day. I don't know about you, but the rain makes me so tired. I just have so much trouble getting going. And oh, it. It rained yesterday. Today has been like humid. But mm-hmm. rain makes me so sad. Like it doesn't make me happy at all. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Hey, that's <laughs> it's the perfect mood for uh, for talking about my music, I guess. <laughs> exactly. I mean, right on to the song. This song is literally like a voicemail. It starts off with a voicemail. So what was the creative process for this one like? Uh, it was it was a lot different than, uh, than the normal creative process, I got to say, because, um, you know, I've got it down to 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 a T by now um, when it comes to creating music. You know, typically it's just I sit down at my, my piano. I've got my microphone and I'll just run through it. Uh, this one I wanted to treat a little bit differently. Uh, I wanted it to tell a story. I want it to uh, to really have an arc to it, a start, middle and finish. Um, and so it started out with with recording the voicemail uh, and then just everything from there. Yeah. Um, it was it was really just all about building the layers and uh, and just making sure that it, it told a story, because that's that's one of the biggest parts of this one that I that I enjoyed. Yeah, definitely. It definitely tells a story. Did you start off writing it from the beginning or was it like you started off with the middle part or the end? Um, so it actually started. Um, I, I had a friend. Um, a couple months ago challenged me to write a happy song uh, for once because I I haven't written very many of those Um, and so I I agreed and then uh, there was one evening I was uh, I was watching the sunset which I try to do at every chance that I get Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought back I was like oh yeah they they said I should write a happy song so I took out my notes app and I was like you know what I'll I'll write about the sunset I'll write about how it's like a nice reminder that you know like the day will end and you you know you can go into the next day with a fresh beginning um and then it just evolved from there so it it really started um it started with the sunset and it started with uh you know having little things to appreciate in life and it kind of just expanded out from there and sunsets are like one of one of the main themes in the song um, and like appreciating little things in life, like you said before. So what other little things in life do you appreciate? Um, you know, there, there's so many things. I think laughter is one of the biggest for me. Um, just the sound of anyone laughing, just there's such a joy to it. There's such a beauty to it. Um, yeah, that. And then I also just love uh, like going on walks dogs you know like seeing dogs um hugs you know it's just it's very little things a lot of it for me has to do with uh with human connection I think that um if you don't have human connection you will inevitably um spiral you know you're gonna go to a dark place and I think being able to appreciate uh, little bits of human connection and and uh, thrive off of that I think is extremely important so I'm, I'm very big on that when it comes to uh, appreciating the small things yeah of course I could totally agree with that um do you have a fondest musical memory a fondest musical memory um that would have to be oh man uh, so so I took piano lessons um oh, I started when I was five years old uh, and I took them all the way up until my last year of high school. So I took them for a total of like 13 years. Wow. Um, I know it's, it's, it's a long time to play piano, probably too long, to be honest. Um, but the, the recitals, honestly, 
were, were some of the best, um, just, just having friends and family there. Uh, but I can also think back to, um, to more, more recent. Uh, there was one time I was in the studio, I was, I was making uh, It's Getting Bad Again, which is currently like my most popular track. Um, and I couldn't get it right for weeks. I would have multiple studio sessions a week. I would go in, I would record it, listen back and go, no, that's not the take. We got to do it again. And I did that for weeks. I was so hung up on it. I just could not get happy with the take. Uh, and then I finally went in, recorded, uh, and came out of the booth to listen. You know, my producer played it back and we just had this moment where we both just kind of looked at each other and just nodded. We we're like that, that's it. And then we released it literally like five days later. There was yeah. like no buffer time between that first recording and then the, uh, or the final recording and then the actual release. Uh, so that was, that was very fun. Just the, you know, th that feeling of finally getting it after weeks and weeks and weeks uh, and just realizing both of us at the same time, like this is the take, this is the one right here. Uh, that was definitely a very good memory of the creative process. Yeah, I love it. Especially after all that time of not getting it right and finally mm -hmm. getting it right. Exactly. Wow. Um, and when did your love for poetry come in your whole life? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's really funny, actually. I used to hate poetry. No. Um, yeah, I, it was uh, up until my junior year of high school. I even remember uh, I was in a literature class and we got to the poetry section and I remember being like, oh, we got to <laughs> go through poetry. We got to, you know, read all this stuff and write our own poems. And I was just rolling my eyes. Um, but then I very soon after that, um, I, I wrote Snow Globe. That was the first song I ever wrote. Um, and it was after hearing Creve Core One by Hobo Johnson. Uh, which is a beautiful oh, piece of poetry. Oh yeah, beautiful piece of poetry. Um, and I think that really opened my eyes to kind of a different side of poetry because, you know, all I'd ever been introduced to was really old poetry that yeah. can be a little, bit, a little bit tedious. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful, but it is, it can be really tedious to read through some like old poetry. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, hearing it in musical form, I was like, wow, this is, powerful this is really beautiful I want to do this yeah. um and so it, it really wasn't until about two years ago uh that I actually started writing um and it started with snow globe and then bouquet and then I just kind of kept going and kept going what is your favorite piece of poetry ever it could be a song it could be actual poetry like book form it's a good question um I'm thinking oh, totally for I'm blanking on his name the, the 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 piece is called OCD okay um give me two seconds I want to look this up. I, ha I have to figure it out this is going to drive me crazy yeah uh it was it was on button poetry uh it's by Neil Hilborn okay it's called OCD if you haven't listened to it okay <laughs> Every time I need like a good cry, right? If I if I'm feeling sad and I just can't cry, I will listen to that piece of poetry and I will sob without without fail every single time. It is this beautiful piece uh, about a guy with OCD who falls in love, um, and then the girl begins to like show love to all of his small OCD things and all of his quirks and everything in between. Uh, and then after a long time in the relationship, those little things that she first loved, you know, she starts to resent them and it's just, and then they drift away from each other. And it's so heart wrenching and so beautiful. Like the last two lines, every time it feels like somebody's sucker punching me in the stomach and I'm just, oh man, it is, it is beautiful. I, I, I recommend it to anybody. Okay, cool. I'll definitely listen, listen to it today. I'll cry. For sure. <laughs> um, and what is your favorite thing to write about? Mm, uh, definitely anything to do with mental health is mm -hmm. um, is my go to. Uh, it's it, it's something that I'm really passionate about ever since. Uh, ever since I first 
shared poetry uh you know originally on tiktok that was the first place i ever publicly shared it um and you know i i instantly got feedback from people that was you know they were saying wow you make me feel understood this really impacted me um which was mind-blowing at the time i was like wow this is this is real like people are actually impacted by this and it made me realize like still to this day people just aren't aware. Uh, they, they don't talk about mental illness. Um, it's very, very real. I mean, very real. Almost everybody nowadays is facing some kind of battle. Um, and we're still not talking about it. We're still not understanding it. Um, and so it really motivates me to write poetry about mental illness and about mental health uh, for people to understand themselves, for people to understand others, um, to know that they are important, that they're valued, that they're heard. Um, it's just, there, there's almost, it, it's almost addicting, honestly, being able to put those feelings into words and, and, and help these people in this way. Um, so yeah, that far and away, that is, that is my favorite thing to write about. Yeah, and at the same time, you're like, coping with your own struggles and you're helping people at the same time that's incredible yeah it's like a it's a two for one yeah exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm, very, I'm very lucky to be able to do it <laughs> and um tiktok you are so popular on that like what was that like seeing all the feedback coming in was it overwhelming at times mm. i think overwhelming um doesn't quite sum it up even i think <laughs> It's, I mean, it's, it's truly beyond overwhelming. Um, I remember the first video that went like really viral, which was bouquet or bouquet, depending on who you ask. <laughs> I remember waking up the morning after seeing just those numbers pop up. Um, and I mean, it's, it's terrifying, I would say, uh, to know that that many people are listening. Um, I remember I went, I went to school the next day because I was still in high school at the time. And I felt like I was like floating the whole day just because just because of the overwhelming like feedback and what people were saying and just the fact that it was all centered around me. I mean, it's it's very, very overwhelming. Uh, don't even know how to put it into words, honestly. Like it's it's very similar to being on stage and having an audience watch you, but the audience isn't tangible. You can't see them. You can't talk to them, yeah. but they're watching regardless. Um, and there's, there's something very, very overwhelming to that. A um, little bit scary at times, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, but it, there, there's also a beauty to it um, for, you know, complete strangers to come together um, hear what I have to say, understand it, share their own experiences. That's one of my favorite parts of the whole app is seeing people pour out their hearts and their emotions in the comments and, you know, being inspired to do so just because I'm doing it. <laughs> and I, I think that's just, it's, it's pretty incredible. Honestly, it's, it's such a great app. <laughs> it's, it's, there's, there's nothing else like it truly. I mean, it has its, its bad sides, of course, but it's amazing anyway. <laughs> and last question, who are your favorite artists right now? Oof. All right. Uh, Flat Sound is number one. Okay. Has been for a while. Uh, incredible, incredible artist. If you, if you haven't ever listened to him, definitely check him out. I will. I be prepared uh to be hurt a little bit okay. <laughs> that his music is primarily what i'll listen to whenever i'm writing um yeah he's he's definitely number one um dandelion hands is also up there uh hobo johnson he's he's still up there i'll just say his first and second album are okay. his latest albums <laughs> Not so much. I'm still a fan. Just, you I still know, love you. Hope I'm just a it. fan of the first and second album. Maybe <laughs> not as much the next ones. Uh, yeah, I'd say those are my top three right now. Uh, we got, yeah, Flat Sound, Dandelion Hands, and, and Hobo Johnson, definitely. Amazing. Those are incredible. Um, thank you so much for chatting with me. It was so much fun. Of course. Thank you so much for having me on. Mm -hmm.